solidly all the way around. Close the lever and that grips the processor so it can't fall out. All right, now that we got the processor in, it's time to put our cooler on. Today's processors run so fast, so hot, you cannot run them. You cannot use them, Patrick. You cannot use them, Patrick, without a fan <laughs> on them. This is a fan. It's very common, a typical fan. It's got heat sinks. These fins here draw the heat up. The fan then blows mm -hmm. the heat away from the processor. It's going to keep it at a reasonable temperature. Notice this one has a little sticker on it that reveals some nice thermal material. This is going to make sure we have a good contact with the processor and that the heat is that because the processor is directly in contact with the sink is drawn right into that heat sink. Now notice there's a lip on this fan. That lip has to go right on the lip on the socket. So I'm going to now angle it in. It's going right in on there. And by the way, <laughs> they've got I little rubber watch. pads on the AMD. What are those pads for that keep me yeah. from pushing this down right onto the glass? You can okay? even buy little copper spacers that, that actually work even more than the little rubber pads to help keep you from doing See that. See that? Now this is, the, this is the critical juncture. We've got some pressure on the chip here. We, what we really want to do is get this second tab on without cracking okay. the silicon of the chip. Look at that. It's on there. This isn't going anywhere. It's really down and tight. And I don't think I heard any chink sounds. So we now have a, a heat sink. And you want to look. You want to make sure it's, got, it's making contact with the processor because you've got to draw the heat off that processor. If this thing doesn't cool the processor, it's going to burn up. Now, the fan connects to the motherboard. So different fans work different ways. Sometimes a fan will connect to a power tail off the power supply itself. In this case, the fan connects to the motherboard on a connector that is really near the processor. Uh, right <laughs> there. Hope. The one that says CPU fan. That's pretty easy. Of course, your motherboard manual would tell you where, but we're real men. We don't look at the manual, right? And I'm just going to connect it there. That's going to make sure the fan turns. Now, please, folks, the first time you power up, look very carefully at that fan. Make sure it is turning. If it's not, immediately shut off the machine. Find out why it's yeah. not, whether you the connection's bad or not. You will fry an Athlon if it does not have a heat sink and it does not have a fan on it in seconds. One thousand, two thousand, gone. who speaks from experience. Yeah. Now, over here, we have the dim slots. And this, this motherboard's nice. It has three. There are different uh, configurations. You can have as few as one, as many as four or five. Three's plenty, especially nowadays where you can get 512 megabytes on a single one of these memory sticks. This is the RAM, the memory we were talking about. This is where all the programs and the data are going to go while the computer's working on it. And this, the, the DIMM slots are numbered one, two, and three. I'm going to fill the low number slot first. That's this slot closest to the processor. Again, check your motherboard manual to find out which slot you should fill first. It may not be closest to mother, uh, the uh, CPU, although it usually is. These little white tabs, open them up. That's, these are the clips that's going to hold it in place. I'll close the two that I'm not going to use so that you can see where I'm going. I'm going to put it right in this one. And you'll notice that every memory stick has little notches cut in it. That's so you can't put it on, in wrong. See that notch right there? That's going to go and match up with the notch on the slot. There's no way to put it in wrong. In fact, in fact I have to orient it this way. Slide it down gently into the guides right here and right here. See how much easier this is to do when it's not in the case? It's still kind of tricky. There we go. Whoops. There we go. And then you're going to gently, without trying not to torque the uh, chip, I'm going to push these, this down and then these clips are going to come up holding in place. But you've got to push a little bit of force. Try not to torque it. There we go. That one's in there, and that one's in there. And you'll know when it's in well. First of all, these white clips will be exactly as the other ones are that are already closed, and it'll feel firm and nice in there. That is good. Now, th this is uh, one stick. That's all we're going to put in this one, but you have room for expansion. It's good to know how to do this because down the road, you may want to expand your processor. Now, there's other stuff that's going to go on this motherboard, our video card, our sound card, uh, and uh, my modem. But I'm not going to put that in yet. I'm gonna, now I'm ready to put the motherboard into the case. How are you doing over there, Pat? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Now, Leo had this pretty fancy little tube of thermal grease. I got something even crazier. Ours, the, the one for this chip, came That's in cool. a, yeah, it came in a little uh, syringe without a needle. You're going to be tempted to put too much thermal grease on. You only need a little dab. You want a thin film of grease on right. there. You don't want a whole layer of... You're not yeah. icing a cake here. It's basically, it facilitates... 
the contact between the heat sink on the chip and this heat sink. Some people actually, they, they take million grade sandpaper and they make this absolutely perfectly flat. We're normal people. We're just going to use a little <laughs> bit of thermal grease to make that connection good. Uh, my motherboard's in. I don't know how you're doing, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. In fact, this is the time when you really do want that manual because now's yeah. the time when you connect these fiddly bits. I hate doing this part. This is the part where you're almost guaranteed to skin a knuckle or, uh, or tear some hair out. Uh, these are the reset switch, the power switch, the LEDs, the little light that lights up. It even says what's on here, that lights up when the hard drive is accessed or when the power is on. These have to be attached to connectors in your motherboard. I got another one down here. And they have to be attached to the right connector in your motherboard. It is usually an array of pins, an array of pins, there is in mine anyway, uh, in the corner of your motherboard closest to the front of the machine, the bottom front of the machine. They're right down here. It's kind of hard to see. And they may even have silk screened the functions of these pins onto the motherboard. So if you've got a magnifying glass or reading glasses, you might be able to actually read it. It's a whole lot easier to find that information in the manual. Here's another one I'm going to connect. This is the PC speaker, you know, the one that goes beep. Not the one that plays music, but just the one that goes beep, beep, beep. You really do want to connect that. I know you think you don't need it. Where, uh, here's where it does come in handy. When the computer first starts up, we'll talk about this a little bit later, it makes beep sounds to tell you how it's doing. And if it can't start up, it'll beep a certain number of times. And you can use that to diagnose what's wrong with the computer. So make sure you do connect your speaker in here. Boy, I wish I had my reading glasses. I can see it is silk screened on the motherboard, but it's kind of hard to see. Another thing that's kind of uh, tricky is knowing which way to put it in. Uh, and sometimes the only way to figure that out is trial and error. There's a plus and there's a minus, and you just got to get the right way. Uh, they'll all be oriented the same way. Do you have any trick to that, Patrick? You know something? I just turned my case around just so I could align my case with a little diagram oh, so it looks inside just the like manual. That. Aren't you exactly. Smart? I'm just putting it in as kind of an experimental way, and what we'll do is we'll turn it on. It won't inhibit the machine from starting by any means. It just either the light will light up right. or not if it doesn't. Easy enough. Again, one of the reasons you're not going to put the case back together and close it all up until you're sure you got everything done. Exactly. Back. All right, well, Leo's wrestling with his case over there. Let's talk about what we're doing here. These are called muffin fans or, or biscuit fans or any of another affectionate <laughs> things, these little round things. Biscuit fans. Biscuit fans. I'm just a biscuit <laughs> under 250. I'm getting hungry. No, let's, let's take a look at this case for a second. Like Leo said, we're going to pull air in through here. We're going to suck in air through the bottom of the front of the machine, and we're going to blow it back out up here at the top of the machine out of the back. Now, you want to make sure that your fans align the right way to do that. This one's pretty nifty. They have a little plastic cage here for the front and watch this now we have the fan in the cage and this is all going to create a little sandwich right on the front of our machine so we'll take a look at this one this is this is pretty slick i gotta admit i'm admiring this so you can put the label side out because that's the direction of the air or label side in because that's yeah. the direction of the air I'm so in this case i'm going to be here drawing air in so we're going to lay that down in here label side in and we're just going to snap that in place it should all line up now i have a little fan sandwich there. The fan sandwich is going to go right up here in this case. Now you might actually have to bolt this thing down on the inside of your system. You might be using more screws for this. Again, be gentle. Remember how you took it off to put it back on. This is nice because the wire trims right up through a slot in the, uh, in the muffin fan case there. So this connector is going to end up connecting to a power tail that comes off the uh, off the uh, power supply in the case. That's how it's going to drive it. Sometimes the fans will also connect uh, directly to the motherboard. It's nice when you get fans that do because then they're, as I said earlier, their rotational speed can mm -hmm. be monitored and you know the fan's working. The worst thing that can happen in the case is the fans die, the cooling dies, and the case overheats and you right. don't even know what's happened. Now on the back side of this system, again, we told you we wanted, we're going to put the label in. That's the direction of the air, Leo says. I trust him implicitly and this one's going to be mounted over here where it's going to draw some more of this air over here and out the back of the fan. Fans. This would be a good time to take a breather. You've installed the most critical and probably the most expensive components of your new PC. So go get some lemonade, pat yourself on the back. You're doing great. Here's a recap of what we've uh, done so far. First, we've opened up our case. We've installed the power supply. We installed the motherboard, the big circuit board, and the CPU that went in the motherboard. We also attached a fan to the CPU to keep it cool. We installed our memory chips, our DIMMs. And finally, we connected all the switches and installed all the other fans we need inside the case. I think it's time. Are you ready? I'm ready to start working on the drives. All right. I'm ready to do drives, too. Okay, let's talk about three and a half inch and five and a quarter inch drive base. Look inside of this system. 
The big wide critters that are usually at the top, those are five and a quarter inch bays. The ones down here are three and a half inch bays. Now you can fit, Leo's gonna to talk to you about this, you can actually fit a three and a half inch drive into one of these five and a quarter inch bays using a thing called rails. I'm gonna do it too. He is. In my case, I'm gonna take advantage of this drive cage down.